I participated in the 2023 GMTK Game Jam where we had 48 hours to make a game with the theme Role Reversal. I had been thinking about what a single player RPG would be like if you played as a healer for a while now, and I felt like it fit the theme closely enough due to you always playing as the character dealing the damage. I decided that the best way to make a healer based RPG was to be in charge of keeping a party of characters alive while they destroy everything for you. Similar to how it works in MMORPGs, but with a bit of Pikmin thrown in. I started off by creating the basic character controller and the party member system. Each party member has different values like HP, armor, attack, and its own role that slightly changes how they fight the enemies. The tank and fighter roles both will charge towards the enemies as they get close enough, and the ranger and mage will stay back either casting exploding fireballs or shooting arrows at the target. The tank was also granted the ability to be top priority of enemies to attack to make the fights more predictable. To determine how you were going to heal your team, I added a party frame system that would showcase the health of your party and give you a way to heal when you mouse over the portrait. The colour of the portrait changes based on the percentage of damage your allies took, helping the player triage which member needs to be healed. I needed to add spells into the game and this was done with a CSV file. I made a script that would take all the data from the CSV and turn it into a dictionary value. This allowed me to rapidly test and alter the values as I saw fit. I made a total of 11 spells, which have fairly different abilities and uses. Your first spell is Heal, a mana free heal with a long cast time. Refresh is a spell that heals the target over time. Protect is a spell that reduces the damage a target takes. Tidal Wave is a large area healing effect spell with a cooldown. Nullify is a cursed projectile that reduces a hostile target's damage. Vulnerability is another cursed projectile that increases the hostile's damage taken. Triage is a large instant cast heal with a cooldown. Blood Transfusion is an instant cast spell that sacrifices your health to heal an ally. Regenerate is a powerful quick heal that is mana inefficient. Healing Aura grants the target an area that surrounds them that heals them and allies nearby. And finally, Resuscitate is an ability that brings allies who have fallen through combat back to life. Each of these spells is assigned to a button and keybind on your hotbar. Most of these spells cost mana, and this is the resource that the player needs to manage. Some spells are free, while others are expensive, and the player will need to use their entire toolkit to keep their allies alive, as they have to play around mana regeneration. Mana will passively recover for the player, but the amount it recovers will depend on how long it's been since you've used mana, with more mana being regenerated after 4, 8, and 16 seconds. This means that you may want to use some big heals and cooldowns, and then just use heal or blood transfusion to keep people healthy as you regenerate mana for your larger spells as you encounter more and more enemies. The enemy's AI works by selecting a target to attack if you are in range, or your allies are in a range, or if the enemy is attacked. When this happens, they will run towards their target with a hitbox that will reactivate based on their attack speed after dealing damage. All the enemies have different health, damage, attack speeds, and run speeds to give them a sense of variety. Cyclopses are your basic enemy, Edens are better Cyclopses and a lot faster, Stone Giants have a lot of HP, are slow and hit hard but infrequently. There are other enemies as you go on in the game and a boss at the end which actually has some additional mechanics associated with him. The level design has you exploring 5 levels in total. The first 3 levels will have you exploring the dungeon and collecting spells to fight more and more difficult packs of enemies, with the final 2 levels being fairly simple small challenges for you to showcase your mastery of the game. In total I spent around 12 hours on the first day making all of the core game mechanics and most of the spells. On the second day I spent 16 hours finishing the rest of the spells, designing the levels, designing the enemies, fixing bugs and polishing whatever I could in the time I had left. I had a bit of a freak out one hour before the deadline when I realized that my CSV file couldn't be read in an exported build, which I just fixed by printing out the dictionary object and hard coding the value. I also realized 30 minutes before the deadline that one of the textures was bugging out on the export build and I had to quickly go through another round of playtesting just to make sure I didn't have any more broken textures. I managed to fix the game and release it with about 10 minutes to spare, only to realize that they gave everyone a hour extension. I just went to bed since it was 3am and a work night for me. 
Overall, I'm amazed and relieved that I managed to get everything I did into this game within the allowed time limit. The game came 4,398 out of 6,738 contestants. Despite the raw score being quite high, it did get penalised a lot by a lack of rankings, which seems to be a trend among games that did not have a web export. Regardless, if you wanted to give it a try, it's downloadable for free on itch for Windows and Linux. Link in the description.